Hello, everybody. Welcome to uh, Vision Quest. I think this is show number five, right, Diggity? I think so. Anyway, I'm the spiritual gangster, psychic medium, Chris George, and this is the lovely Dawn Diggity. Co-host with the most. The co-hostess with the mostest. Yes, yes, she's got the mostest. Anyway, so, and and I, I don't know who's going to be in the chat room here tonight, but I know that Dawn has quite a few fan, fans. They've been flirting with her, like, excessively on Facebook. Luckily, I'm not the jealous type. Keep it so coming. I love the gifts, Take it easy, way. everybody. Love take the it gifts. Easy. Keep anyway, them coming. Anyway, anyway, anyway. So tonight, I'm so excited because one of my, listen, there are very few people that, that I believe in. You know that. Yes. You know, as, as a psychic and a psychic knows fake psychics. I mean, it's just the way it is. And we also know who the real deal is. Um, and for those of you who've been following me for whatever it is, 20 years now, 10, 10, over 10 years doing radio, actually 15 years doing radio and television, you know I call out fake psychics if I think they're fake. I have no problem doing that. Well, my guest tonight... Um, She's uh she practices witchcraft. She's Wiccan from Boston, Massachusetts. They she's known as the Boston Spangler. My very dear friend Kelly Spangler. And the thing you got to know about Kelly is she's right to the point. She's no joke, no nonsense. Um, she's a very very good psychic. Okay, and those of you again who know me know I don't do not endorse psychics. I do endorse her. She's fantastic. And when it comes to doing what she does, which we're going to find about out about tonight. You guys are going to see. You're going to love her. I love her. Diggity's going to love her. I've been talking about yeah, her all week, yes, right? Yes, um, So, Bobby, why don't we bring our guest on? Kelly, how are you? Hey, guys. Hi. Kelly, when was, the, when was the last time I saw you? Oh, my God. Um, I want to say 2015, maybe? That that long ago? Look, what was When's the last time you've been to Salem? Um, I would say about four years ago. Was oh, it four years ago? Okay. It's been a long time. You know when the last time was when Tom got married. That was the last time I was oh, in that, Salem. That's the last time I seen you when Tom Glissy and, and Jackie hit the knot. Yes, yes. Okay. Well, that, that's <laughs> been a while. That's been a while. So I want to know, first of all, my girlfriend, Dawn Diggity, my co-hostess with the Moses, I've been talking about you all week. Um, she has. She, she said to me, can I hit a, Can I go to her for a reading? Because I won't let her go to anybody for readings. I think everybody's a, yeah. a fake. And mm -hmm. I told her, if you're going to go to anybody, I would I would suggest Kelly. So uh, thank you, Chris. And you know what? I do that for you too because I got a lot of people in New York that want to come up here, and they're like, "Well, I can't make it." I'm like, "Well, go see Chris George," and I give them your information and stuff like that because, and I'm the same way. I don't really I don't trust people. <laughs> no, I don't either. I'm gonna give those i trust like my friend janny uh janny d she lives up in new rochelle i get people to her i get people I, I i send them to you and you know so it's you have to trust the people yeah you, know? you have to trust and, and like and just like you whenever my friends go to salem and i have a plenty of friends that go up there i always tell them look for kelly she's she's the one to go to my one of my closest yeah. friends in the world lisa romani um yep. i don't know if she's in the chat room she was supposed to listen tonight but um she asked me, Chris, if I go to Salem, who should I get a reading from? And you were the only person, obviously the only person I said. I, I only know one other person from Salem, and he doesn't live there anymore. You know who I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, but, again, if I'm going to send anybody to anybody up there, it's you. Anyway, you. welcome to our show. Thank you, Don. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate that. So let, let's get into one. Why don't you go with the first question, Don? Oh, why don't you get into it? Oh, you want me to go? Yeah. Oh, no, okay. uh, just saying that we absolutely have to take a trip to Salem. And I think your next investigation should be in Salem. Okay. okay? We've been saying that. You 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 want to come, don't you? <laughs> well, I was well, to that event there in July, but everything got all messed up this year. So I was like. Well, oh. if, if we would, is there a place up there where we could rent like the place out and do an overnight investigation? Overnight? I can look yeah. into I can look hmm. into it. Yes, I'll well, look, look into it. it. And even if it's not overnight, if, if you could find something that we could, you know, go to like two, three in the morning. Yeah, you know, that definitely could happen. Yeah. Because you know, I, I could I could pack I could pack out an investigation. Every time I do the Shanley, which I'm doing again in December, you know, right. I, I, I pack the place out. So between what you and I, I, I think, you, I think we could do something. Yeah, there's one place I would love to look at. It's Turn of Seafood, and it used to be called the Lyceum. Um, and it's a very, very haunted, very, very uh 
amazing place. I've had so many experiences, Chris. I can't even start. Where I where could I begin? You know, that's how good it is. Right. Um, so it's uh, Alexander Graham Bell made his first business call to Boston there. So that's kind of a cool history. And also Bridget Bishop, that was where her house and her apple orchards and farm was as mm -hmm. well. Very, very haunted. Yeah, well, then, then I'm over. You, you find a place, you know, we'll make the arrangements and, and we'll set it up because you know me, I love doing that stuff. Oh, so yeah. re really quick, okay. Sure. Were you always a witch? Did you, were you born a witch? Did you have to grow into it? How, how does it happen? Here's the thing. Being a witch, right? Okay, so I believe I've always been one. I always believe in that. Because since I was a little girl, like three years old, I've always been attracted to, like, you know, like the pagan way of life. You mm -hmm. know, like the, the, the earth, the, the, you know, the sun, everything, the moon. It was just kind of really like in, instilled in me through myself. I was brought up as a Catholic, Roman Catholic, Irish Roman mm -hmm. Catholic. So, of course, it was shunned. It was like, you know, we don't, we don't talk about no ghosts. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, right. No, uh, but I always felt as a kid, I was connected, but I didn't know what, how to explain that, right? So I was always a witch in my mind. You can become a witch, but I feel like it's always been there. Do you understand what I'm saying? I do, and it's funny you say that, you know, you were Catholic. You said Catholic, right? Catholic, Roman Catholic. Yeah. So I'm obviously, I'm also, I'm Italian. I'm, I'm most Italians are Catholic, especially from yep. New York. Um, yep. and, and it was, you know, it's shunned upon being a psychic medium by the Catholic religion. You know, in the Bible, it says we're charlatans and we're, we're of the devil and stuff like that. So, Absolutely. you know, to, to come out and uh, as a psychic medium and for you to come out as a witch was, was no little thing. And, you know, we're, we're not, you know, 20 years old, you know, so when we came out years ago, it wasn't so easy to do because we were looked at, upon as like, we were weirdos, you know? Yeah. So. So I would keep it to myself a little bit at first, you know, I mean, when I was like, I would say 13 or 14, the whole Motley crew, you know, all that mm -hmm. stuff, you know, I, and I was like all into the, the, the witchcraft. Then I would, I would, uh, I would do my own little stuff. Then I just kind of lost it, but I always had like that psychic thing, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm a medium. So, you know, it goes, always been in my life. Um, and then I kind of went into my band stage and whatever. And then I got back into the craft again. And I dedicated myself ever since, you know. Um, well, you know, I, you just said something I, I didn't know. So I, I always knew you were psychic. I didn't know. I didn't know you were a medium as well. I'm a psychic medium. I'm a trans medium. You know what that oh, is? Like me. Okay. And, and see, maybe that's why we connect so much because there are not too many trans mediums out there. I'm a trans medium. Yes. Oh, that's, wow. I the spirit. I'm a necromancer. You know. Mm -hmm. You know, necromancy has been a, around for since the beginning of day with the... So for those people who don't know what necromancy is, could, could you just give them a quick little synopsis on it? So necromancy is basically like working with the spirits. Um, I guess we could say communication of the dead, right? So it's kind of mm -hmm. like I work with them side by side in magic so that they are on my side. And I, I work with them as basically to resurrect... Uh, for the purpose of divination. Does that make sense to you? So I'm like, I'm going to resurrect. I'm going to stand over here. I'm going to call my, my spirits in and they're going to work for me, but I'm also going to work for them. I'm not going to yeah. just let, you know, and there's got to be a give and take. Exactly. You have to give and take. So um, I wish you could see my alt. Maybe later I can give a little peek. Um, yeah, I would love that. I will. I will. I got, I have a few altars in this back room, um, but necromancy is basically, you know, um, it, yeah, it's basically to, 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 to kind of work with the divination of, of the spirits and, and, and long ago, back in like, way, let's talk long ago, years and thousands of years ago, the shamans, the shamans, they use necromancy to work their magic. Right. They work with the dead to heal. Mm -hmm. That's what I do. I work with the dead to heal. I work with the dead to bring in good fortune. I work with the dead to, you know, to, to, to make my home feel better or to your home feel better. You know, it's all, it's all about really, I mean, there's darker signs to it. I know, but mm -hmm. this is the good side. <laughs> well, it's very easy. You know, when, when I teach my, 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 my spell classes, Kelly, you know, I always tell people that there's a fine line between white and dark. And a lot of it is just in your wording. 
you know, your intention. And that changes the spell completely, in my opinion. What, what, what do you think about that? I totally agree with that. hundred percent. It, yep. it's, it's all in the, it's all in the wording. Dawn, what did Lisa Somebody Reagan? Somebody had a really question? good question. Lisa Reagan asked, what is a trans medium? So okay. a trans medium? Go ahead. Who do you want? You want me to say? You can, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Show. Well, trans medium is somebody, well, and if anything you want to add on, Chris, um, you know, it, it's somebody that wor works with the spirit. The spirit comes through them. And you become that spirit. Your face will change. You'll distort. Your voice might change. Your eyes might change. I can feel all the pain of whoever is coming through me at that time, or the happiness, or the giddy, or the anger. And so, so basically, we become the spirit. And that's mm -hmm. what it is. And it can be a little freaky for some. <laughs> For, you know. for, many, for many people who see me go into trance, a lot of oh. times they, they wind up leaving when, when we're doing like an investigation. They get so freaked out that they leave, but no, they don't realize how intimate that is for for um, a, a medium like yourself or myself to mm -hmm. allow spirit to use our body as the vessel to bring forth the message. That's an intimate little exchange there, and there has it has to be mutual respect. And I'll tell you what does happen over the years. I've been doing this for so many years, as you have. I mean, we've been working with spirits since we were kids, right? So what happens is if you, you have to cleanse yourself after, after every session, because it does hurt your body. It absolutely can make you sick. It can make you hurt. It can make you handicapped. I mean, so you have to like, really like, make sure you don't put the two feet in that dirt. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. when, you're, when you're working with those that are passed over, because it's not always good spirits you're working with either. That's that's a hundred percent true. You know, I want to I want to ask you a question, Don. So uh, obviously, you date me. You've when the first time you saw me go into trance and become someone else, what what went through your mind? And I'm and I'm curious about what no what, what has gone through the mind of people that you've dated oh. what said to you as well. But what did you think with the first time you saw it? I didn't know what to think at first until you started talking to people that. Um, talking to them as if they were their loved ones, like people that were just in a room that didn't, wasn't expecting anything. Mm -hmm. And then for you to say something and to really hit home where the person would say, um, you know, that's what my grandmother used to call me. If you would touch on a name or some, you know, that somebody would call someone, you spoke Russian one time. I've spoken trans, Yiddish. Yiddish. I've, 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 I've spoken African. I've spoken Chinese, yeah, spoken Chinese and Sumerian. Oh, that's pretty cool. So, yeah. but, but, but were you freaked out when you saw me change? Like when my face I changes? I mean, a little bit. Not so much when we were in a group setting with the like friends and family, but when you were at the haunted hotel and you're channeling bad spirit, then yes, I was freaked out because then I knew that the spirit that was inside of you was evil. And what what about you, Kelly? Your your significant other. I don't know if you if you're with somebody now, but in the past, well, how did they deal with, with, with what you do? Well, I mean, Bob, my current man, Bob. Um, he he's he's all about it. I mean, he's a Catholic. He's not a witch. He's straight up a, a, a Catholic from Boston, you know. Um, and so he he supports it. He likes it, and and he hasn't seen me yet uh, transform. We've only okay. been together once. So you there's so much. Oh, you think he's gonna freak? If he sees that, yeah. <laughs> but my ex, you know Barry. My ex. Yes, yeah, I remember he, Barry. I, I love Barry. He too, he too would uh, not. He's not a uh, trans medium, but he too is is kind of intuitive and psychic. So he would mm -hmm. he would get into it, you know. When he's seen it, he's like, yeah, you know, let's go with it. I can yeah. only imagine the two of I us at an event going question. back and forth Does in trance. Bob get personal psychic benefits. What's that, hun? Does Bob get psychic benefits? Yes, he kind of, what happens is. Interesting. I, I, I think that he, he is, because he's, I don't know if this is what you mean, but since we've been together, he has kind of like started to pick up on being. A little no, no, that's not what she means. What does she, she mean? Wants to, she wants to know if you give him psychic insight to things because she tells oh. everybody who watches the show that she gets no perks for dating a psychic medium. No, he would, he would tell me things before it's going to happen or I good have. things. I've done this, but the one thing I do have a my girl pole. 
Uh, she's my, 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 I have my own coven. It's called blood and kisses coven. Um, and she's, she's a, a student of mine, right? Mm -hmm. Girlfriends. And, uh, she, I have allowed her to give him the insight okay. because, because we live together kind of, you know? So it's like, we're kind of all together all the time. Well, for, for, for the record, Kelly, I've given a, quite a few psychic two. perks. Two doozies. That was it. I want more than two. I have questions. So I probably have to go to Kelly. So he publicly endorsed you all week. He was just going on and on. I was like, well, why didn't you tell me about her before? I could have gone to her immediately for a reading. Huh? Well, you, you can. I see the video. I'll be in your inbox later. I'll get Bobby to, and then we can like have that kind of cool mutual like uh, exchange. We can definitely do that. So, so, like, so can anybody be a witch? I mean, is it is it that simple that anybody could become a witch? No, I didn't think so. No, it's not. people say everyone is psychic, and I don't believe everyone is psychic. Personally. I woke up a witch. You know what I mean? Like I've been I've been studying for years on how to uh, work my energies and how to project and how to uh, you know stand ground and make sure you know th there's so much to witchcraft you never ever ever can get bored because it's always a study you right. study every day you're studying all the time there's so much to it so and, and witches are different I'm more of a, I would say eclectic because I I do a little bit of everything you know I don't have like I'm not Norse and I'm not uh, Irish and I'm not this and that you know I am just Kel and I am a witch you know, you know what always stood out for me with you What's when you were on when I had uh, my show Second Sight, you came on and and we were talking about spells, which we're going to talk about tonight. And you went, "Oh no, I just put it out there like that, and bam!" You know, and I love that. I love that because not everybody has the 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 intuition that has the internal, you know seed that you need to be able to to manifest a spell and to be able to just put it out there like that i i found that to be pretty interesting i know that a lot of people still in coven from the past there they, they have the same sight as i do in the same way so it's kind of awesome we all we all come from the same cloth you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. but uh, yeah it's just right. yeah it's amazing amazing things can happen in a minute hey, number five what that's all. That's you. That's me. That's you. Okay. Are all witches psychic? Do you have to be psychic to be a witch? No, you don't have to be psychic to be a witch because witchcraft is different than being a psychic. It's two different entities. You're so lucky, right? But a lot. I mean, all of us in Salem were really pretty much both, right? Because we just came together as that way. But I think I, I've known some witches that don't read cards, that don't read people, they don't have like that whole like you know whatever, but they just practice what they practice. You know, um, a lot of people say is, is, is witchcraft a religion or is it a practice? I practice religiously. Okay. And right. Is this what so, you do that, full that, time? That, that are witches. I I've known, I I've met them. How can I become psychic? I'm like, you just, you just are. I right. can't think you can just become psychic. I think that you're in, it's inbreded in you mm -hmm. through your DNA. Through Kelly, your is this what you do full time? Full time. Yes. Full time. Full time through my home in Salem. I'm licensed through the city. Okay. Yep. And I, I do readings here. Um, of course, mediumship is my primary. I love that. It's my favorite. That's um, my favorite as well. So yeah. if people wanted to get in touch with you, what's the best way for them to, to reach out to you? Well, they can go to my website at kellyspangler.com. Right. I also have readings with Kelly Spangler. It's like page on Facebook and I have Kelly Spangler as a, you know, I, I prefer to not use that because that's just my personal Facebook page, mm -hmm. but if you touch with me, you know, um, and uh, Salem readings at gmail.com is my email address. And my business line is 781-799-9528. I'll repeat it again. 781-799-9528. And they can get in touch with me that way. They can text me, call me, and I'll get back to you, you know, in, in a timely manner. I, you know, I'm this not probably not so timely. <laughs> oh, I'm going to be in your inbox right after the show. I have questions. <laughs> you got questions. About this guy Tell that I'm dating. 
about the guy you're dating. About the guy what questions I'm dating. you have about me? I have a million questions. <laughs> okay. your, your, your biggest fan just popped up in the, uh, in Mickey? the chat room. Yes. Mickey. Hi, Mickey. So, so Kelly, th you know, th yes. this is a question I, I love. Okay. Yes. What are yes. some of the common misconceptions about witches and witchcraft? That we're all yeah. that we're out there to cause harm to animals and that we're all satanic. That's the one thing that aggravates me. <laughs> I mean, I can be a little dark, you know, Chris, I do take mm -hmm. it satanic kind of ways with me, but not in a, I'm going to kill animals, this, that, and other thing. Uh, Satanism is more of a lines of uh, being like kind of a, you know, loving yourself. You're the God, you're the demon, you're this, you're that, right? Right, absolutely. But we're not going to go and kill an animal. That's yeah. one of the things I can't stand about uh, how public or, or even Hollywood portrays witches. We're not green. <laughs> right. Well, we could. <laughs> you know? let, let, I, so I, I want to expand on that. So when it comes to Hollywood, yeah. what movie would you say best depicts what witchcraft truly is? <sighs> what a question I wasn't prepared for. Well, hi, you see the one with um Nicholas. Uh, uh, what's his name? Not Nicholas Cage. What's his name? I have no idea. Please help me. What well, you gotta oh, give me a hint? What's his name? Oh, uh, think about the Shanley Hotel. That, that, that what's his name? Um, I have yeah. no idea. It's me, it's right here. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> Practical magic. Oh magic. my god, that was on that on, was on my mind. I was going to say that too. That, that's with the Sanderson sisters, right? Yeah. Yeah. Is it? Well, yeah, it's yeah. with um, Sandra Bullock. Sandra Bullock. Yeah, right. I agree. And... I, I was hoping it you. Would name, that please, Nick. Uh, what's the man's name? I don't remember. Who was the guy? I don't remember. One blue eye, one green eye. I don't remember what his name was. Um, I don't remember either. Either way, it was amazing. Practical magic's pretty close. Yeah, yeah. And, and 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 what movie do you think is absolutely ridiculous the way they depict a witch? I mean, first of all, let's think about you know the Wizard of Oz. I mean, it, it, it's fun, it's it's canny, it's it's something for the family. That's it, it, Harry Potter. I mean, I love Harry Potter. Like, listen, what I'm telling you, these these are my shows. I love them, but Harry Potter is so silly. Like, I wish we worked that way. I wish it was like, boom, <laughs> you know. Kelly, do you remember years ago? I don't remember the guy's name. It was Richard something. He was friends with, I know with me. I know he was friends with you many years ago. I don't know if you're still friends with him. But he used to call himself a wizard. And and I got into this big Facebook war with him. I was calling him Harry Potter. Do you remember who I'm talking about? Yes, I think I do. Yeah, is he still around, that guy? Yeah, I think I, I think so. I don't know who you're talking about. Oh, I, I can't think of his name. It was Richard something. And, and he was going on about how... All psychics are fake, but he's a wizard, and he's oh not god! I was just like, you know what, Harry Potter, take it easy. I couldn't handle it anymore. <laughs> right, he's Harry Potter, right? I, I watched it, and then and then our mutual friend Tom. Oh my god, he went in on this guy who was it was it was brutal. So, okay, so witchcraft being evil. So, so that's a big thing. You know, people come to me all the time. I teach spell classes. I'm I don't know if you do that. I'm guessing you probably I do. do. Okay. Yeah. So I teach spell class and people t tell me, well, you know, it, it, you know, it could be, it's evil and I don't want to do black magic. And, and I try to explain to them, you know, you can take a spell and by your words, you can make it negative or do it the right way, which I, you know, I don't like saying the white, the black, doing it the right way, doing it the wrong way. That's just kind of like how I put it. Um, right. What is, what are some ways you can make a spell that's supposed to be a, like a, a nice spell? into a negative spell. And how could you do that? Because Love people ask me all the time how that's done. Love spells can screw up your life. Mm -hmm. Don't do those. Well, I, I have, listen, I'm not going to lie to you. I do love spells. And I tell people, listen, this is going to, it could or could not backfire on you or me. So in other words, like spell... How do I explain this? Spell work is so, 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 so like intricate. It's very, very, very important to me. It's like prayer. It's like I'm going to church. I'm going to pray. I'm going to go to God. I'm going to Jesus. I'm praying. Mm -hmm. But in my own church, right? Right. So anything I do in my own church, 
comes back to me. Right. See? So love spells can go bad. Well, you know what I tell people? Like in a love spell, like I do love spells as well. In, in fact, if I had to rank the spells I do, it would be love spells first, then money, money. then protection, and then health. Okay? Exactly. That's in, exactly. In that order. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the way I, I tell people, you know, they say, oh, I want, a girl will come to me and say, I want uh, John to love me. I yeah. tell them I can't put his name to the spell. Because once, once I put his name to the spell, I'm taking his free will away from him, which now crosses the line from white magic to darker magic, and I won't do that. What I will say is the person who's supposed to love you the way you deserve to be loved and the person who's going to accept the love that you're going to give them, that's who I want to come to you. But I will not put a name to any spell I do because then that's a mark on me, and I'm taking free will away from somebody, and I don't teach my spells that way. Right. Would you agree with that? I do agree with that, but I have to say I have I have done it. I'm not well, gonna lie. Listen. You just depicted my movie, The Practical. Ma you know, uh, <laughs> I was just like, what are you doing? That was the whole concept. Kelly, I loved you know, it. You know what? When I, met her, I, I did. I did a spell. Okay. Yeah. When I when I met her, I had just recently broke up with somebody, and okay. and I went through a little phase or whatever, and then I I did a spell for myself, a love spell, and I said I want the person to come to me. Who, who deserves me. And then I met her and, and I actually took my magic, my wax magic that I made for me. And I gave it to her. I just gave it to her. And then how soon after that, did we get together? Pretty soon. You gave that to me as a gift on the first date. I gave that to her as a gift on our first date. I have to say that's beautiful. Yeah, I mean, I took my own personal magic but that I made for me, and I looked, and she, I, I knew she needed somebody in her life, that she wanted somebody in her life. I, said, I, I'm, I'm I wasn't you. looking. No, but neither was I really. I, well, I wanted that's somebody that's to come to me. I always say to time. expect the unexpected. When you least expect it, expect it. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Uh, and money so spells, I love money spells yeah. are my favorite to do, and I love well, keeping that like this. Those are my favorite, but for myself. Yeah. Like myself, I do money magic. The thing is this. Okay, here's my gripe with money magic. Because I do charge. I'm not going to lie. I charge for my time. Well, you have to. Right. I'm no. not trying to. Listen, no. my big problem. Let me tell you what my big problem is. In the paranormal community, okay? Yeah. And I know you, you've been part of the paranormal community for a long time, like myself. Uh -huh. I despise the paranormal community because they have all taken a vow of poverty. Everything has to be free. And you know what? What we do for a living should not be free. We're giving people a service, okay? No. Now, you know. They're going when, back to 2004 when the hunters came out. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Free stuff, so uh, absolutely, and that, that's kind of like why I left the paranormal community because ev everybody was, you know, oh, you know, the people. I remember driving 150 miles to go help somebody, and then people saying you can't charge them. I'm like, you know, I just drove 150 miles one way, spent the night at a hotel, and then drove 150 miles back home. I'm not supposed to charge for my time. Come on, yeah, you, yeah, you that's do. Crazy. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. And I agree with you, Chris, 100%. And I don't care what anybody has to say, but if I'm going to go out there and I'm spending my energy and my time and it can affect me when I go home, mm -hmm. it me. <laughs> Sorry. So, it's just uh, like a hairdresser or a tattoo artist or a nail person. You give that, you, you give that you, their time is money and then you tip right. them. Okay. So, you know, as a psychic and as as a as, as a as a, a witch who's doing witchcraft and doing spells, what what is one of the ways you protect yourself? People ask me all the time about psychic protection, and mm -hmm. I, I have my own personal protection that I teach people. What's mm -hmm. something that you could tell people how they can protect themselves? The way I use stones a lot for protection, to be honest with you. Um, you know, like labradorite, amethyst, moonstone, like, cause they also, not only do they protect me, but they also conjure up the dead as well. Mm -hmm. So I love those three stones as a, as a purpose. So I have labradorite here, mm -hmm. here and I have my moonstones on each pinky because I feel like that's where the power comes in. I don't know why. Well, the moonstone is also very good for attracting love, self-love. Mm -hmm. Moonstone's a wonderful, um, wonderful gemstone. Before I do an investigation or uh, even a reading, you know, I, I tend to, to go towards that sage thing because I do, I have a lot of Native American in uh, teachings in me as well. So mm -hmm. I 
a lot of that to kind of cleanse myself. And I, and then I call upon my spirits, my spirit guides, my ancestors, my family, my friends, my familiars. I bring them around me, protect me with St. Michael in front of me, behind me, above me, below me, beside me and around me. That's what I do before and after I work. That's, That's great. great. And for the people listening, and you know, just put up Oh my Arch Archangel Michael. Archangel Michael is the great protector. And yes. that's why anytime you do any type of spell work or any time of any, any type of magic, um, mm -hmm. or it, like like for myself who who I do seances and stuff like that. Me too. Uh, yeah. Always call an Archangel Michael. He is the great protector. And yeah. I want to add one more thing to that. He's got a band of angels called the Carry On Angels. Okay. They're like his mercenaries. So when you call on Archangel Michael, you could also call on the Carry On Angels to come and assist him in you know, cleaning up the negative energy. Yeah, so, absolutely. Big, big fan of Archangel Michael. Me too. He's my favorite. Yeah, you, you, you and me both. You know, I mean, he is south. He is fire, which I'm fire, and you know, I'm an Aries. So I'm like, bring him on. Let him. You know, I and I love, I love working with the flame and the fire and all that. So, and Michael likes that and take out the evil. We don't want it around. And um, being a uh who I am, a lot of dark does come through me. So it, it, it's like, sometimes it's like, oh my God, it's so heavy. I'm like, okay, I don't want this right now. So then I have to call upon Michael to bring it out of me, you know? Mm -hmm. and we had You had asked me earlier, I think, about experiences of other people around me that see me as a trans medium. And I'll tell you, um, we were at my coven sister's house one night ex coven sisters, I will say, but, but I still call them my sisters no matter what. Um, and we were at my, my old boss's house and, um, I got taken over at their house. Mm -hmm. So much weird crap going on in this house. And then we wanted to form a circle outside and I'm like, I'm taking over and they knew it. So I went outside and they all like circled around me and yeah. I'm, I'm all these, and I wasn't me. I, I didn't look like me. So two people had to run across the yard and stand there and say, I can't go near you. You're, you're, you're freaking me out. Like you're scaring me. And I, I, when I was, I guess I just, I just started spurting. You know how you do. And everybody's freaking out. So I had to have someone come in and like, just take him away. You know, oh, that, that, that's interesting. I've had instances like that. Listen, like, again, our mutual friend, Tom, who's, who's my guy. He's my, He's my number one guy, and when I when I do investigations and everything, and um, Sorry. he's had to pull me out a few times. <laughs> yeah, Andrew, you met Andrew. Um, I, met I, Andrew? I, don't, I don't think no. so. Aw, well, next time you have to meet Andrew. He takes me out of. He's my Tom. Well, one one time, Dawn actually tackled me at an investigation, picked me up, body slammed me. Yeah, yeah. I mean. <laughs> That, that's a normal occurrence though in our house. <laughs> that is, that's a normal day, right? <laughs> I, I mean, it, I become, I can become really, um, really scary. Speaking of though, scary and talking about uh, protection and curses, I'm sure a common thing is people will come to you and say, "I believe that I have a curse that was put on me." Can you identify if they do? Is it a misconception? Like, is the misconception is in your mind. You're cursing. Okay. Well, I, you so know, I understand that. That's a great question. Mm -hmm. Do you think? Can I put a curse on somebody? I'll pay for that. <laughs> you could. Yes, you can. <laughs> but then, then there are little mark goes on you. So oh, you got to okay, remember never that. Mind. So, do you think it's okay? Like, say, say somebody puts the malocchi on you, which in 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 Italian is the evil eye. Somebody puts yeah. the a yeah. hold on you. Oh, Do you think it's okay for you to give it back to them the same way? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I like it because most people say, oh no, but, but not you. Yeah, you yeah, yeah, yeah. you, you want to punch me in the face and make my mouth bleed? I'm going to make your face bleed. There you go. I'm, That's I'm, the same thing. I'm but with you on that. You know how <laughs> go. Same with magic and same with anything else. If you're going to put the malaki on me, I'm going to make sure it comes back to you more than three. There you go. So anybody in the chat room that's listening to the show, if there are any questions that, that you'd like to ask um, Kelly about witchcraft, 
put it in the chat room. Diggity will see it, and 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 she will gladly ask um, Kelly. Um, what about um, what? I want to go back to spells. Okay. What, what what's the easiest spell? Like like for people, if they wanted to do a spell for protection. Okay. Right. What what do you think is the easiest type of spell for them to do? Just people watching the show right now. I, I really believe uh, working with stones and candles for protection magic. Please so uh, spells for um, stones and 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 uh, spells with stones and candles. Okay. You know, um, like for protection. I mean. Amethyst is like huge for me. I don't know. I'm like everybody's different. That's a thing. Like everybody's different how they would do protection spells. But I'm really huge on working, like putting my stones in front of my candles and just kind of focusing in on my aura and just seeing like who is trying to touch my aura. And then just like go into this vision, like a vision, like vision quest. Right. Like, go into it and just like going, okay, who's there? And then just. And just this, I don't know how to say it. I just zap them back, you know. But I, I mean, you know what I like? You know, I, I'm I'm very into like runes, like the rune stones, um, like and, and combining rune stones for specific, you know, reasons for, for specific things. And what I want to say again. Protection's different because there's so many things that you can do with protection. Absolutely. You know, so many stones, candles. What I, what I like, I like to get a candle and I like to scribe the candle. I know? do that. You know, when you take like a toothpick or or, a or something and you scribe certain things in there. There are certain rune stones, symbols that you could put on, on a candle. And then there are a couple of things you could do with the candle. And then you, what I like to do is hold the candle in my hand and charge it. And the way I charge it is I, I call in the golden light to come through me and, and I charge my candle for the purpose of whatever the purpose is. Love, money, health protection, whatever. Um, a lot of it is done visually, all done with your third eye. Um, and people don't realize how easy it can be. But are you saying that anybody can do this? Or Well, okay, that, that's a good question. You know, I mean, everybody can do it, but it, it really, I don't know what you're doing. You're, you're, you're going to harm yourself. Or, yeah. or you're gonna you, know what, you know what I think, Kelly? So, like, I, I could have a, a, a class on spells, and I could say have 15 people in my class. I know 10 of those people, as I'm doing the class, I know 10 of them have no shot at making it work. None. No shot. OK, I um, they love doing it. They love learning it. They love they love actually doing it. And then they write everything down and they practice. And I love that they do that. But I know that it's not going to work because they don't have that certain something. They don't have that focus. And then there'll be five people in my class. That I say, you know what? They could they do can. this, you know, with they the right practice. They could do because they, they're focused. They're, I mean, they're, they're, all their energy is going into that spell and nothing is distracting them. Because the second you get distracted when you're doing a spell, I think you're done. So I'm 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 working a few spells on my altar right now. So this is one of them. I've been I just started. Where's my? Sorry, uh, you know I'm starting to scribe on it. I'm not going to show you what it is. So I'm going to go fast. But there's one uh, candle that I've been working with, right? Um, can, how can I show you the altar? Hold on. Let's see if I can give you oh, a nice. quick. Yeah. Can you see it? Yeah, yeah we can see yeah. it. Okay, so it, this is my main altar. I, I normally don't really want to show it, but I'm going to do it tonight. There's so much that I've been doing with this altar. Um, and there's my, you know, the wall. You can, I can't tell if, because there's no turnaround option. <laughs> it's a little hard. I would but, say that if somebody would want a spell to go to the expert to do so, like I would recommend that. I, I agree with you. You know, Dawn, how many times people come to me and they say, Chris, I want you to do a, a spell. And I tell them, listen, let me teach you what to do when you do it. All right. And I do that too. If, wow. Yeah. And if, if, you can't, if you can't get it, then call me and then I'll do it for you. But I, I like to give people the chance to do it by themselves. I'm a big believer, Kelly, that I, I want that, that person's energy in the spell. What was that? For a money spell when you have no friggin' money. So I'm going to teach you what to do. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Absolutely. I mean, I I, I took this one had to do a money spell, and then she she did it, and guess what? Well, you could you tell her. Yeah. Well, yeah. my spell has one try. It needs to, you know, it needs to do another <laughs> one. But when he did do the money spell in the beginning, it was just unbelievable. So I will 100% endorse that. 
publicly. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it doesn't yeah, last forever, so maybe we could do another one. Yeah, I think it's time for another time. one. Money spells make my tip jar grow. Yeah, there you go. I like that. <laughs> but it does work because I didn't really expect. I wasn't. I, I don't know what I was expecting actually in the beginning, but I will say that it did work. So also, yeah. that's an endorsement. I did just publicly endorse. Yeah, yeah. you see. <laughs> So, so, Kelly, a question I love to ask people that, that are honestly psychic. Yeah. Who in the psychic community do you um, do you admire? Do you think it is good at what they do? It's Amy from The Dead Files. So her Amy? and I, you know Amy from The Dead I don't Files? Know, she's, I think she's good at what she does, too. She ain't good. She's great. Yeah, no, she, she, she's one of the good ones. I agree with you. She came to Salem years ago. Uh, to remember, I, I worked down at the shops downtown. Yes, one of the shops downtown, and um, it was late, and I was meeting Barry for the for a beer after work. It's October. I'm like, ah, dude, you got another reading for real? I'm like, I'm, I'm logging out. I've been, I read fifty people, right? I'm tired. No, no, you really want this? And they didn't tell me it was Amy Allen, right? So I'm like, okay. So I sit in my booth, and I'm like, bring her in. I was like, hello. I was like, hello, Amy. <laughs> I just knew right away. You know it's her. So I read her. She was she was pretty impressed. She was pretty so, she, I mean, really was impressed. She gave me her card. So I did a few uh, things for her with her show in the background. Mm -hmm. You know, like when they say, oh, call a medium. Right. She would hit me up and say, this one, this one, this one. And I'd go in and work for her doing that, you know. Um, so she is my favorite Okay, and what about least favorite? What's that? Least favorite? Yeah. Really? <laughs> Come on, bring it. <laughs> All right. The, 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 the Long Island one. Okay. Long Island. You know, I live, in, I live in Long Island now. So I I'm know, that's why you didn't want to say it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I want to go there with the Long Island. I call Long Island. I see. I mean, she's, she's really, she's a sweet person. I know she is. But the glam, I don't like the whole, I'm going to touch your... I'm gonna to go to a stranger and read you. In the yeah, I'm not a big believer. In the I'm not a believer in the drive-by reading. And, I don't like and, reading. You, know, you and I have a, a mutual friend who no yeah. longer lives in Salem, who is notorious <laughs> for that. And oh. that person actually did that to to Tom, and Tom <laughs> lost his mind about it. Went up to him in a bar and just started reading him. And Tom said, "Did I give you permission to say anything to me? To get you know?" Tom got really upset with that. And, yeah. and the truth is. That's not something I believe in. You know, I have told people things. I've gone up to people and say, listen, some people seem to think I'm psychic. I have a message if you want it. No? Okay. No problem. I will never go up to somebody and just say, listen, this is, I, I just wouldn't come that out without doing it. I'm never. Angry. <laughs> yeah, it just, but I, the drive by. It sounds like evil when I said that, but it does. It makes me angry because it's like, it makes me, me look foolish. It, it My job in my career it is something that I love and it, it's my entire life. I surround my entire life by witchcraft, the psychics, the paranormal, like my whole life is that I live, breed, spit, everything. Don't make me look foolish. Um, I'm with you on that. I'm with that. that you know what, Kelly, I, I love that you said that because that's the reason why I don't do psychic fairs anymore. No, I don't do it either. I haven't done them in years. I can't. It's driving crazy. I, I remember going to psychic fairs and there'd be like, say, 10 of us. And I'm looking around. I'm like, you know what? Six of these people are flat out frauds. And who's the, uh, you know, there's this one guy. He called himself the gay Cuban, the gay Cuban witch from Jersey or whatever. And after every reading, he was taking Florida water and wetting his head. And then you know, I was just like, you know what? Stop with the theatrics. Enough. Couldn't handle it. No, I don't want yeah, to. That's why I'm going to do an event, you know, and I did an event <laughs> with this one psychic from, well, no, she's not a psychic. There was this woman in, in, in Long Island who, who befriended me and asked me to do a psychic event with her here in Long Island. And, you know, I was just coming into Long Island. I'm trying to get known in Long Island. So I'm like, okay, let, let's do an event in Long Island. Right. And she was a fraud. And I figured it out that night. And I was so upset that I, I, I didn't look. And when I say look, I mean with my third eye, I didn't look deeper into her. 
I just took her out of her word that she was a real psychic and she had, and she wasn't. And I was, remember, you remember this. I was so upset that I was part of that, that I, you know, I just, I just, I'm done. But the only yeah. good thing that happened that night, well, besides the fact that I, I took a whole bunch of her clients because they figured out that she was a fraud too. But, um, there Sorry. was a woman that came from South Carolina who, whose husband had passed and, mm -hmm. um, she came in from South Carolina for this event and I actually did some trans channeling and I actually channeled her husband That's at the cool. event, which was, you That's remember cool. this? I have no idea what you're talking about. What are you talking about? Lisa Reagan, when we did the event? Okay. I don't remember. All Maybe right. well, anyway. like lost the whole event. <laughs> well, anyway, it was, it was an event and, and it, it wound up being good for me. But I was very upset th at the fact that I, I let myself get kind of taken by a fake psychic, if you can imagine. Drove me out of my mind. Out of my mind. That's crazy. So one other thing. Um, when I came to Salem, I think the first time I met you was at um, uh, 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 Salem Con, the first one. Yeah. I think it was the very I first one that they did. Yeah. All right. So I remember going on a tour. And there were these people in, in a basement of one of the stores that was very haunted. And they were doing the Ouija board. Oh, I think you went to the same place. I It's my friend's store, which is uh, Remember Salem. Yeah, I, I don't remember what it was. There was a lot of shirts in the place. I remember that. Yeah. But, okay. but in the basement, the basement was awesome. It was creepy. It was haunted. But there were these people doing the Ouija board. And I'm watching them, and it was amazing because it was just spelling out everything. And and I looked, and Tom was with me. I said, Tom, I said, this is a fake. I said, this guy's a fake. I said, watch this. I'm going to call him out. And I did. I told him, I said, why don't you put a blindfold on? And he says, well, what, what do you mean? I said, well, I said, this the board is talking to you, right? It's answering all your questions exactly what you wanted to answer. Why don't you put a blindfold on? Right? And he did it. And guess what? Then and it was it worked. after that. I was like, yeah, I rest my case. And I walked out. You know what? They, they told me they threw me off the tour. Oh. <laughs> I, 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 I said, you Tom, I, have to laugh I'm sorry. Because I, I didn't mean would, to do that. Because I would do, you know? Like, yeah, yeah they, they threw me right out. Oh, hey, what man. So do you have anything coming up that you want to let the people know about? I mean, I don't have anything like in particular, like, uh, you know, an, a particular event. I, I took this year as doing a lot more house parties and a lot more in-house and a lot more phones. So if, if, if basically if anybody wants to have a reading or anything, they can contact me like we said earlier. But I'll tell you, um, I am starting classes soon at my house. Oh, that's good. So I'm going to be doing, um, you know, Tara 101, you know, that whole crap, but right. I'm going to be doing automatic writing because I love that and it gets deep and so amazing. I love doing... Oh, did you just say automatic writing? Yes. Okay, so here's the deal with that. That's not easy to learn. It's not easy to teach. Nope. I mean, I, I've been teaching it for a long time. And it's not to easy to teach and it's even harder to learn. Mm -hmm. And I and I have... Uh, I get great success on uh, teaching this class. That's awesome. And what about people that get nothing and they're like, huh? I'm like, all right, you need to like open and expand your third eye, right. you know, your crown chakra, get a little into the earth, out of the earth and more into the space, <laughs> you know? Yeah. What, what about, um, like I, like I, I teach basically psychic one-on-one, all right, basic stuff and people love it, but I want to teach, um, I like to teach more advanced classes, like, like the mediumship stuff. Do you teach mediumship? No. Not easy to do either. And, and you might find that that I is people think frustrating. You could teach something like that. Well, you can teach the basic. I, there are five. So let's say we have five people in the class. It's just mm -hmm. five. None of them are psychic. None of them know what the hell's going on. I'm not going to waste my time trying to explain or try to work what I do. I have my whole life that I had to do this with. <laughs> I'm not, I can't take my whole life and put it in an hour or two. No, it's got to be. It's got to be a monthly thing. It's got. You have been, to do I, This is something that's more inbred. You were born this way. You already had it. You already know the spirits. You already know. So I would say enhance your mediumship. Enhance your. But I can't teach you how to be a medium. That's, you know that's, that's absolutely true. Yeah. 
Now, what I mean, yeah. another another class that I love teaching is teaching people how to figure out who their spirit guides are. Do you, do you do something like that? Nope, I don't do that either because no. I I just teach you know basic crap. You know what I mean? Like the 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 the, the the tarot class and how to do numbers or how to work, you know, the spirit board or whatever. Um, I don't teach them things that I know they, that they probably can't do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say, Hey, let's go. T I can teach you how to find your spirit guide. You can no way. I'm sorry. Well, that's I, I have some, an interesting story. You know, back in the day I used to teach at the Edgar Casey Institute in, in Manhattan and I was teaching okay. a, um, a channeling class. Now I knew I there, were like, there, were, there were like 40 people in the class. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, there was this one woman who was from California. She'd come into New York for whatever, but she was there. She came to my class and she got up in front of everybody and said, I have gone to at least 40 channeling classes to learn how to channel. And I've never channeled once. She goes, I don't think it could be taught. I'm like, Okay, I said, you know what? How about you change your mind? I said, come with me. I said, you're gonna work with me. Long story short, this woman actually channeled for about seven seconds. And when she came out of it, you want to know what she said to me? What? <laughs> it was only about seven seconds. I said, whoa, 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 whoa. But I you said, channeled. You just told me you've been to 40 classes and you've never channeled once. I'm working with you, and you for seven seconds. You channeled, and you're not going to say that that's something? Do you right. think it happens like that? No. You failed 40 times. I worked at you one time, and you got seven seconds. Now, seven seconds to people might be like nothing, but when you're channeling. But it is something. It's something because you – it's so, to get to the point where you allow spirit to come into you and, and actually give them access to you, mm -hmm. that's big. And a lot it's of people huge. can't. That it's frightening, it's it's terrifying at first until you learn how to do it, correct? Yeah, I mean, man, channeling can be scary for me. Um, I think you should leave I I keep, keep it dark into my I head. I move, so I had I, a joke there for eight seconds, but I let it go. Uh huh, I was yeah. busting, but I was like, you know. The other night, Dawn and I were fooling around, and she asked me if I could channel Elvis in his prime. And I was like, I, I, I'm I not know. into Elvis. Oh, who did you say? <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, so Elvis. One, one more question Have you ever gotten a message or channeled somebody famous? Jesus. Did you? Come on, stop it. I'm not lying to you. You want the truth? I yes, I'm going to hear it. All right, so I'm going to say 2005. I was working in the town Melrose, Massachusetts, and the lady had her own shop where she had us, uh, me and my friend um, Terry the Rock Lady, the stone lady. Um, so we, we, we did some reading. She did her stones. I did my mediumship, and then she wanted a reading. I said, sure, no problem. So I go into her office, and I'm, you know, we're sitting there, we're reading, and all of a sudden, she has like this, you know, like a big wall in front of me or whatever. Behind me is whatever the hell is behind me. And then she has like this table where she would massage people, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, this is cool. So I'm sitting there and I'm reading her. And all of a sudden, the face of Jesus covered the entire wall. I'm not lying. He covered the entire wall. And I said, I don't know what's going on. I've never seen anything like that. I was flabbergasted. Well, I, yeah, I, I can imagine. I started, I started coughing. I was like, what is happening? <laughs> because it was so exciting. And then I told him what was going on. And he said some messages for her about her shop and to be careful because there are people who are trying to be snaky, blah, 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 blah. Um, she goes, Kelly, do you know what's behind you? And I said, no. She goes, turn around. So I turned around. She had a, like a shrine for Jesus that she had done the night before asking him to come through. Wow, that's awesome. Wow. Um, so, awesome, right? So I have to say, he's real and he's huge. <laughs> His head was so big. That's what he said. <laughs> that's what she said. Back me up here. But yeah. <laughs> real, though, well, listen, yeah. Kelly, we only, we only have about 50 seconds left. So I guess uh -huh. it's the point Aww. where I have to say. It just went so fast. It did. You know what? But I told you, I mean, she it's she's so cool and she's. We'll do it again. 
I would love to have you on. Yes. The, I, I know it's a little bit late for you, and oh I apologize, God. but you yep. are a fantastic guest. I know my audience loved you. Um, I love you we need to bring her back and do some meetings. On. Would, would, you, would you like to come back on and maybe do like dual readings with me? We can do that. Oh, that would be fantastic. I think the yeah, audience yeah. would love that. What Maybe you, in November. because Do you really readings good. from me and, and Kelly? Absolutely. Yeah, maybe well, November. Okay, yeah, we can yeah. definitely set that up. Well, listen, we only have eight seconds left, so I have to say goodnight to everybody. Aww. Thank with you, everyone, for everybody coming. Making the unbelievable I believable. Hope to get to meet you very soon. Oh, good night, everybody. Good night, guys. Thank you for having Bye. me.